Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. We'll be looking further in uh, deeper detail with the Corvette design. Some of you placed your concerns about how aerodynamic the Corvette design was. It's almost like it was an atmospheric craft rather than a true bulky space oriented vehicle. So I want to see if I can't maybe make that or change that up a little bit, just a little. Okay, I, didn't, I don't think any of that is actually going to work. This, this is pretty good. Yes, it looks like it should be aerodynamic in some case. And if that's the case, if the aerodynamic thing is bugging some people, I think I can actually fix that by... And, it, you know, this isn't like, I know a lot of you are like, well, don't cave in, you know, do what you want to do. This is your craft file and everything. But I do listen to everything that uh, everyone says. And I do take in consideration about uh, the pros and cons and uh, a lot of the either positive or negative light that's on this or, or on these particular uh, vehicles or vessels. And what that does is that actually helps me look at the craft file and make it better. And in this instance, I, I do I do think that it, it is pretty darn aerodynamic for its own good, especially being a purely space vehicle. Being able to land on moons, but still a purely space vehicle. So I think what I'll do is switch up the cockpit, maybe with something like this, right? But I'm gonna do things a little differently here. I'm gonna leave it like this. However, I am actually going to use armor to cover it up and make it look good. I say armor, but it's just, you know, metal plates. I might move the cannons out just a little bit. We'll see. I might even make them full-fledged cannons instead of having that aerodynamic nose cone. The only reason why I have the nose cone in there is because it can attach radial radially to objects. Oh, this is covering up the flag and the RCS ports. I'll have to figure out where to put those. Ooh, I got a cool idea I can do. It's actually looking kind of neat. Little on the mean side there with this forehead, well, not forehead, but nose that's kind of pointed down like a sharp dagger, almost like having fangs. And we can actually take the flag and put it on the armor. I really like the fact that a lot of people pointed out about the flags and how their orientation is supposed to be like on naval vessels and stuff of this nature where it's supposed to be pointed in one direction almost as if there was a there was this, this imaginary pole right here and the wind was making it flutter going backwards as the vessel's going forwards interesting i never knew that see i learned a lot from you guys that's why you're awesome okay so the thing i was actually going to try out was to make and i screwed up by actually i have to redo the cal 1000 on this one but the cannons can be right in front Okay, let me see if I can do something about this. Can I bring them closer together? Maybe further back? And then I could do something like this. Okay, all right. That's kind of interesting. Reminds me how the World War, old World War II airplanes used to have like freaking six, six rapid fire machine guns, three on each wing. Some would have like four. It was just this crazy amount of projectile firepower. Because back then in dogfights, it wasn't like, oh, I'll just aim and shoot once and done. There was a lot of trigger squeezing in the skies back in those days. I wonder if that's where the terminology spray and pray came from, but I'm probably wrong, of course. Still, in this instance with KSP, spraying and praying is not too far from the truth. Of course, we gotta make sure everything is uh, auto-strutted. I think there was a question a long time ago asking about, do I use auto-struts? And if I do, why do I use regular struts? And I believe I've answered this question many, 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 many times before. But of course, we have newcomers to the channel. Welcome. And so I'll go ahead and let you know why I use both. And it's because a lot of times your auto struts won't connect properly the way you want it to in order to make something a lot stronger. So I use a combination of both in order to connect pieces together that won't necessarily connect via the auto strut. It's one of the reasons why they're still in the game, because even the developers know that auto strut isn't a fix-all kind of design part or whatever. It's not a one-all, be-all, fix-all, do-all. You'll still need to strut certain parts together in order to make them work properly. I wonder if I can give this thing a pinch more fuel. I would just 
you know, put atomic rockets all over the place, but uh, they're not that strong. So when you're landing on a relatively large moon with enough gravity to really screw you over if you don't have enough thrust or weight ratio, <clears throat> you're going to need a decent engine. One that sips on fuel while in vacuum, but still has a considerably large amount of thrust, or at least large enough to slow you down in time before you slam into the surface. Now here we are with the spike engine. Its ISP is, uh, for vacuum, is 340, which is nice, but its thrust is 180. I mean, I, I, hmm, maybe. I like the Wolfhound, even has a cool name. 375 in vacuum and 380 ISP. So 375 thrust and 380 ISP. That's pretty damn good. In a lot of ways, I think that's even better than the Spike. Hell, even the Cheetah only has 125 thrust and 355 ISP in vacuum. This thing has a lot of thrust and it's great for vacuum. This is a great little engine, you know? It's got a lot of thrust and it's really great on in uh, ISP and vacuum. Although, looking back in edit, I can see that those engines are about three tons a piece, so that might actually hurt it in some way. Maybe later on I'll test out different engines and see if we can get a better Delta V with a TWR. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll take this armor off. Just set it aside for now. Is that attached to anything? And eh, looks like it's attached to the missiles. We'll take the missiles out of there for now. I've got to I've got to redo the missiles because that this plate right here was meant to try to keep the RCS fuel from sucking the life out of or the fuel out of the rockets. But RCS, like the Vernor engine here that uses liquid fuel and oxygen to create thrust, unfortunately, RCS in general sucks up fuel from anywhere around the ship, regardless of the couplers or structural panels in the way or anything. It will suck up fuel from anywhere around the ship. I've tested this out thoroughly. It is it's a, it's an unfortunate uh, unfortunate uh, uh, part of the game. So we'll just have to figure that out. Uh, some, somebody uh, did say to maybe grab a, a fuel line and place it into the rocket to keep the rocket or the missile fueled up. But um, the only problem is, well, I don't know. That can't can with the Kerbal attachments, the, the, you know, the thing that they added in a couple of versions ago, or the, not the inventory, can an engineer take a fuel line and place it from one to another? It says this cargo part that can be placed inside inventories, and I've seen them use struts in space to connect one v uh, one part to another. That would be cool. An engineer could actually do that. Hmm, that might be something that we have to do in the future. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this part right here, dump it, and increase the fuel. Oh dear. <laughs> hmm, that was the part I was thinking about using, but it's a little too big there. Oh, hold on, hold on. Don't knock it till you try it, right? Let's see what we can do. Hmm. Wee! Uh, I mean, uh, eh, it's not working for me. Whoa, give me back my armor part. There, now go die. Okay, so this has the same fuel as this one. It's just shaped more pleasingly, right? So let's use that. And that'll give us, uh, compared to this, it's 180. This is 360. Okay, so it, it's a little more than half more fuel, right? That's what we want. Right? Take the engines and kind of scoot them in a little bit. Might have to look at our fuel and weight ratio and all that good stuff for a second. Well, hold on now. Maybe let, let's try and make this a little bit more, what, asymmetrical? Okay, put the missiles back in. Oh, someone did ask why wheeled landing gears on uh, the Corvette thing that I, Corvette vessel that I'm working on. Why not just have it land? And I think they were talking about land like this and just kind of stay there in that position. Well, here's the thing. If we're going to land on a colony, right, unless we have a supercomputer, which I am not, I will be able to land maybe near the colony, but not in an exact precise spot. And it would be hard as hell trying to do that. It's a heck of a lot easier just to take this thing, land it upright and have it tilt downwards, have the wheels come out, and then sort of drive up to my parking spot. Kind of like an aircraft does when it lands at an airport. It drives right up to the parking spot and then it's a heck of a lot easier to manage. Especially if you have a couple of them. Just imagine one lined up right next to the other, right? That'd be cool. Like have a row of them and they're right in front of their each individual fuel tank as, as the engineer comes up and plugs them in and just slowly fills them back up. That'd be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that, that's my reasoning for having wheels on the uh, spacecraft. You know, I'm not so sure I want a red glow anymore. I thought I did. Oh, you know what? 
Okay, so it's not the red glowy that I'm going for. It's actually like an eyeball red. It doesn't illuminate anything. It just looks sinister as fuck. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I think this is... I, th I think that's it. I think I... I think... I think we're done. At least for now, anyway. But this is really close to being a full-fledged out there in the universe craft. Real quick gun test. Oh, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> pew, pew. Oh, okay. Okay, I like you. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and does it light up? Oh, boy. That is, that is pretty bad. <laughs> Gee, even Christmas. That's horrible. It's kind of funny how this lights up just fine. But, oh, no, not the flag. And, and EVA. Whoa, wow. Yeah, I was, mm, was kind of worried about that. All right, there we go. We'll put a ladder on here real quick. Okay, so like I said before, we'll have to play around with the lights on the flag later. But there it is. That should do if I was to click on... Uh, transfer over to here. And then EVA. And boom, there we are. If I was to uh, click on that and extend the ladder. Go up to the ladder. Grab the ladder. And does it allow me to go up there and board? Yep, board. Bam, there we go. One of these days, I, um, I'll do a full-fledged mock battle, but that's going to take hours to record. Anyway, that's it. That's all the time I got for tonight. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all. Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.